Hello everybody, I'm Dylan and today we're going to have a look at No Night Is Too Long, a British film released in 2002 on BBC2, a network in the UK. The film is based on a novel of the same name, which was released in 1994. The novel was written by Barbara Vine, or real name Ruth Rendell. As for the film, the screenplay is by Kevin Elliott and directed by Tom Shanklin. It was also presented by Alliance Atlantis, a Canadian company. So this film was a bit of a joint project between the UK and Canada, as most of the filming was done in Canada. So No Night Is Too Long begins with our main character, Tim Cornish, played by Lee Williams. Tim is a man in his early 20s, attending his last year of university. He seems to be bisexual, enjoying the attention of both men and women, and the handsome Tim can get attention very easily. He meets Ivo Stedman, a paleontologist graduate in his mid or late 20s, played by Mark Warren. Tim and Ivo initially have a passionate relationship. Soon after, Ivo reveals that he needs to travel to Alaska over the summer on a business trip. And Tim throws a fit at this because he doesn't want to get separated from Ivo the entire summer. So Ivo pulls some strings and Tim is then allowed to come with Ivo on his trip. However, Tim is very flirtatious, having already wooed some other girl and now he doesn't want to go on the trip anymore. So it's clear from the beginning that Tim is one of these people who falls in and out of love very quickly and doesn't give much thought about broken hearts. So Tim goes to Alaska with Ivo and Ivo reveals that he will be gone for 10 days, angering Tim and leaving him alone in their motel room. So Tim hangs out on his own and meets a girl named Isabel, played by Michaela J. Michael. A passionate affair occurs with Isabel, but she then reveals that she has to go to Vancouver, Canada. Tim wants to go with her, but she refuses without giving any clear reasons why. After a few days, Ivo returns. Ivo is still in love with Tim, but Tim has already emotionally moved on. They have a fight and Tim says it's over with Ivo, but they are still stuck on this trip together. So they go via cruise ship with a group to an island for an excursion to look at fossils. Tim and Ivo find themselves alone and a fight breaks out. Ivo is pushed and hits his head on a rock with blood coming out of his head. This is where the film takes a really dark turn. Tim is shocked but leaves Ivo there for dead. When it's time for the ship to go back, Tim meticulously hides traces of Ivo leading the others to believe he's on board on the ship. Tim has stolen Ivo's money and credit cards and leaves for Vancouver. But with no address and no way to find Isabel, he is stranded there. He hooks up with some dude, then eventually goes back to the UK. Tim is guilt ridden and also receives letters of blackmail. All throughout the movie, we see glimpses of Tim talking to what we assume is police, confessing to the events with Ivo. Tim keeps pining for Isabel, which surprises me because I don't know what this one girl has that nobody else in Tim's life didn't. Their encounter was very brief, but I think Tim likes the thrill of the chase more than the actual end result. Some more things happen, but I won't spoil them here. So No Night Is Too Long is not a film that I had ever heard of. I came across it by complete accident. I sometimes order packages of DVDs, gay themed films in particular. There might be 12 to 16 films in the package with one or two in particular that I was looking for. No Night Is Too Long was one of the random films in there. I eventually watched it completely blind with no expectations and I was surprised at how good this film was. I don't think it's very well known and that's a shame because it's a gripping psychological drama slash suspense. The first half of the film is mostly a drama and the second half goes into suspense or psychological thriller territory. I am a fan of horror movies and thrillers and this is a really well done film. I should mention that I have not read the book so I can't comment on the similarities or differences with the book. If anybody is familiar with both I'd love to, for you to comment and give me your impression. This is a film that also does a good job subverting your expectations. You can never really tell which direction it's going in. The movie throws a few surprises and a couple of plot twists that I didn't see coming. My only small gripe is at the end, the last 5 or 10 minutes of the film. They throw you a lot of little twists I don't know were necessary. Uh, I got lost a little bit and I had to watch the last few minutes a second time. The film could have stopped before these because the overall story is rich enough on its own. But maybe these were in the book as well so I don't know. It doesn't take away from a great movie. The actors are also fantastic in their roles. Good acting makes a difference, especially in a film like this one. So this film has a lot of themes we can tackle. Uh, the first theme to this film is promiscuity and adultery. Tim can very easily and quickly go from one relationship to the next and this is what causes him most of his problems during the movie. His actions really come back to bite him in the ass. A secondary theme concerns Tim and Ivo's relationship itself. 
jealousy, control, and domestic violence. Tim has psychological issues, but Ivo is by no means mentally balanced either. He displays extreme behaviors, is prone to outbursts and physical assault and sexual assault in one instance, but began as a passionate affair turned toxic fairly quickly. A third theme is crime and cover-up. When Tim accidentally pushes Ivo against a rock, Tim decides to leave Ivo there instead of getting help. It's definitely a dark and disturbing turn, which leads us to our fourth theme, psychological repercussions. We follow Tim a year after the events, and it is evident that the past events have had a psychological toll on him. But even before this, we discover that Tim may have been molested by an older boy when he was younger, so we presume it might be one of the reasons for his promiscuous behavior. No Night Is Too Long has a rating of 7.1 out of 10 on IMBD. It doesn't have a rating on Rotten Tomato, possibly indicating the obscurity of this film. I rate this film a 9 out of 10. I think it's really that good. I would consider this to be an underrated hidden gem. I definitely recommend it, if you're in the mood for a good suspenseful drama. It does have a bit of that novelized melodrama. Novels are usually so rich in detail that it becomes hard to put all of these details in a two hour movie. So have you seen No Night Is Too Long? If you've seen this movie or read the book, I'd be interested to hear your views or opinions on it. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, add me to Facebook, and I hope to see you for the next review.